Getting solar panels for your boat is like ordering food in Italy. You know you want to eat, but you don't want to have to learn Italian, which is a beautiful language. But just to order a meal? Once? So why learn the entire language of solar panels? Watts and amps, amp hours, watt hours, voltage, MPPT, just to get some on your boat. If only there were a way to just get whatever someone else has already figured out that works the same for your boat. Before we get started, we just dropped two new episodes on the Practical Sailor channel, one on Starlink and how to make it better, and one on the Island Packet 370. I'll leave links below if you want to check them out. We've gone down the rabbit hole in past videos on measuring how much electricity your boat uses in a 24-hour period. Mine uses 180 amp hours, for example, and then selecting a battery bank based on that usage, and then selecting and building out a solar rig to match all that information, and it's a very deep rabbit hole. Today we're not going to do that. Today we're going to work from a different direction and make it as easy as possible. We're just going to assume we want as much solar as we can fit on our boat reasonably. What is everyone else using that has already learned Italian? And what's working out there in the real world today? We don't need another Tony Soprano in our house. A brief interlude for a second, if I may. You guys said it was okay to rant here, and I have a little bit of a rant today. I'm going to answer some commonly asked questions from the comments section on this channel. Question 1. Tim, are you ever going to sail south again, you loser? Yes, when my daughter goes off to college in a couple years. Question 2. How is this a sailing channel? This guy never sails. This isn't a sailing channel. If you want bikini girls on white sandy beaches, go watch something else. This is a get more people sailing more easily channel, a celebrate sailing channel, a buy a sailboat sailing channel. This is a help other people join us in this awesome sport of ours, no matter what the haters say sailing channel. Katie, this is your night. Don't let the haters stop you from doing your thing. This is a channel on a mission to share sailing, to remove the gatekeepers and naysayers that would hoard sailing all to themselves, the know-it-alls and the rich old men that tell you you can't do this thing. Because you can, and you're going to. Question 3. This guy sailed to the Bahamas once and thinks he's an expert. Okay, that wasn't a question. It was just a sort of character assassinating comment meant to boost somebody's ego in some sort of childish tantrum, and that's okay, dude. Express yourself. Sir, while well, you saw me sail to the Bahamas once on YouTube, thanks for watching, by the way, I'm no expert. Yes, I've acquired a bunch of knowledge, but I'm still learning. I race in multiple leagues multiple nights a week because I want to learn more. I'm always saying that the first 75% of sailing is actually pretty easy. Anyone can learn to make a sailboat go in generally the direction that they want. It's the efficiency, that last 25% of sailing that takes decades to figure out. That's what I'm working on. In my quest for knowledge, I own three sailboats and I use all of them often. I sail and race all over North America. I make this channel and dive into the history of sailboat design and construction. I take questions and consult with people every day on the subject of sailing and sailing boats. I use my CL14 to teach kids how to sail. Am I an expert? Absolutely not. I've acquired some knowledge and I'm going to share it because I love sailing. I love helping people. Do I have something to offer the sailing world in my own small and humble way? I think so. At least I'm trying. And again, thanks for watching. Okay, that garbage out of the way. Solar. Usually we work from a how much power do you need perspective, but instead, here's what people actually use in sort of three bite-sized options for you to choose from. I'm going to use the same solar panel in all three options to keep it super simple. It's an easy to find, well made, long lasting 340 watt panel from Canadian Solar. These guys have been around for ages and even Delos used Canadian Solar panels for a while. If you have minimal needs, lights, radio, auto helm, basically everything short of a freezer, one of these bad boys will do you just fine. And it's five foot three and a quarter by almost three and a half feet wide. So you can hang it off the back of your boat, mount it over the cockpit, easy peasy. 
This panel kicks out 340 watts, so it'll charge your 12 volt deep cycle battery, let's use this one from West Marine, at just shy of 30 amps every hour. You likely already have a 30 amp battery charger that you use at the dock, so basically this solar panel will do the same thing that charger will, except it'll do it while you're not at the dock. This battery we're looking at is 80 amp hours and it's AGM, so about 80% of it is usable, so you really get about 60 amp hours. This solar panel will recharge that battery fully in about two hours of good sun. In between the solar panel and the battery, you need a charge controller that'll handle this 340 watt panel and 30 amps of charge that it's going to kick out. So the Victron 100 30 is a really good fit. The 100 is how many volts it'll take and the 30 is how many amps it'll charge with. It's the perfect charge controller for this solar panel. I found the panel for sale in Florida, just as an example, for about 150 bucks. The battery's about 300, you can get a better deal if you shop around and don't go to West Marine. And the charge controller's 150, total $600 and you're off grid entirely, assuming that you don't need that freezer. Throw in a thousand watt inverter and you're golden. In good sun for let's say five hours a day, this rig will give you about 150 amp hours a day you can use. My boat needs about 180, so this wouldn't be enough for me. So what if you want a freezer or just way more power? Option two, this is still good if you have like a 35 foot monohull, but you'll have to frame it in up as a bimini or something, which doubles as a nice sunshade. And in my case, triples as a rainwater collection system. Two of that solar panel, 340 watts times two is 680 watts. Now we're cooking with sunshine. And remember the size of these panels. Two of them side by side will be just over six and a half feet wide, the same width as most mono hull cockpits conveniently, and almost six feet long. Total charge now jumps up towards 60 amps every hour of sunshine. So we'll jump to a, a Victron 150 slash 60. And because we have so much more charge coming in, we can store a lot more energy. Let's grab a pair of these group 31s. 105 amp hours at about 80%, so 170 usable amp hours. Total cost, 300 for panels, 350 for the charge controller, and about 900 in batteries. We're cruising in at around 1500 bucks. But now we can run the freezer. Throw in a 2000 watt inverter and you can run the power tools whenever you want to. This is a fairly similar setup to what I have and use all the time. As long as it doesn't get cloudy for more than a few days, it works for me. 680 watts would work for most people and plenty for most lifestyles. This is ideal if you'll be on a mono hull with a single fridge and a single freezer and laptops charging all the time. You'll be able to watch movies at night and fall asleep, letting the movie continue to play, not worrying about leaving everything on. The batteries will be full again by noon anyway. The mission here at Lady K Sailing has always been to get more people sailing more easily, and I couldn't do it without your help. A big shout out to the patrons, people who give a couple of bucks an episode to make this all possible. Thank you. If you'd like to help out, please consider becoming a patron. Option three, we're going to get ridiculous now, and behind this episode, there is a reason for this exercise. I'm building out a solar system right now for a different purpose. Not a boat solar system, but all the same principles apply. And on this build, it's going to be go big or go home. A full-on mobile office. Unlimited power. Sort of. Let's talk about 400 watt panels. $250 a pop, almost six feet by four feet. And let's do four of them. 12 feet by eight feet of panels totaling 1600 watts. That's a thousand dollars in panels and will require multiple charge controllers. We'll still be using Victron 150 slash 60s, but two of them for these panels. So we'll need two controllers. That's $700. In good sun, say in Florida, we'll be bringing in over 600 amp hours every day. That's almost enough to run my house. In fact, outside of the electric dryer and stove, it is enough to run my house. And we'll need to store all that energy. And lithium would be nice. How much is that? Well, I was talking to the guys over at Battleborn a few days ago, and 100 amp hours of lithium from them is running about $750 right now. For this much solar, I would say we need about 500 amp hours of battery to store all that power. Lithium is good to about 90% usable, so that'll be 450 usable for almost four grand in batteries. So 
total with lithium, all in with the panels and controllers, about $5,500, and we'd never need to plug in again. But food for thought, people still use golf cart batteries. They're much heavier and only good for about five years, but if we swapped in eight Trojan T105s, we'd get the same 450 usable amp hours and a total of about $2,000 cheaper. So $5,500 with lithium, $3,500 with lead. Of course, this is a four dummies approach in this video, building this will nickel and dime you with connectors and some wiring and a battery monitor, but this is the nuts and bolts of it. The bigger question you should ask is, how many panels are you comfortable fitting on your boat? One might be just enough for you. Two is what most people are using. Four would be amazing if you can find the space, like on a catamaran. Solar, like sailing, doesn't have to be elitist or difficult or some mystery requiring you to learn Italian to understand it. Sometimes we call the back of the boat the back of the boat and not the stern, and that'll piss some people off. But if we aren't pissing some people off, what are we even doing? A quick reminder, if you want to jump on a boat and gain some experience and help somebody in the process, and you're on the East Coast, or you're on the East Coast and need help moving your boat, I have a Facebook page for East Coast Crew Finding. It's called Lady K Sailing East Coast Crew Finder. I'll link it in the description. Also, go watch and subscribe to that Practical Sailor channel. It's all new. We just did those two episodes on Starlink and how to make it better on your boat, and then the Island Packet 370. I love you guys. Until next week. Keep the heavy side down, but not too far down. We'll see you.